Cheryl Bautista. Cheryl, you have, um, on the Subaru, you have one red light violation and one tow zone. And then you have a ticket that goes back to 2012, five years ago, on Madison Street. It was a Chrysler. Did you drive a Chrysler five years ago? But I don't know. I'm going to dismiss it. Okay, we're going to take a look at the red light. This is on Pleasant Valley Parkway and Valley Street. Light is yellow. It's red. Red right now. You're on the vehicle. Red right here. This is a pretty flagrant uh, violation. I know. Way before. Um, that morning, for the past 20 years, I transport veterans disabled veterans to the VA hospital every third Tuesday um, for blood work, dialysis, whatever they need. This morning I took this veteran. Um, he was in distress. He was having some problems. I recognized it as pneumonia as I've been transporting him for over 20 years. Just before, maybe a half a mile before the Dean Street exit, he was coughing blood in my car. VA's under construction. I pull up to the front, get a wheelchair, put him in the lobby. It's raining out. Go to park my car. No parking in the front lot. So I go back where I us used to park when there's no parking in the VA parking lot. He's 71 years old. I couldn't leave him in a wheelchair spewing blood. So I parked where I could. I ran back in. I got him in, and he was actually admitted to the hospital. So that's... That's all I got. I get the picture. Okay. You do God's work. You're transporting veterans to the hospital who are sick. This guy's in your car. He's vomiting blood. He's, right, he's very sick. It's 6 o'clock in the morning. There's no traffic on the road. You didn't place anybody in danger. You went through the light. Now, I'm very familiar with the area. Okay. So then you drive up to the hospital, which is about two minutes away, they got all kind of construction going on there. They don't have enough parking space for veterans who are disabled. And then they put up tow, they put up tow signs, which are a hundred dollar fine. So here you are, the Good Samaritan, right? You got a, a veteran who served this country honorably. You're transporting him to the hospital. He's throwing up blood. Then you can't park at the VA hospital and they give you a hundred dollar fine. So now all of a sudden, it's costing you $185 to do God's work. And there's something else that really impresses me here besides that. You know what it is? You have no other violations. These are the only violations you've ever had. You know, keep up your good work. Okay. Case is dismissed. God Thank love you. you. Sir. There's a Chinese saying that goes as follows If you want happiness for an hour, take a nap. If you want happiness for a day, go fishing. If you want happiness for a year, inherit a fortune. If you want happiness for a lifetime, help somebody. If that saying is true, and I strongly believe that it is, then Cheryl must be one of the happiest people on earth. For the last 20 years, she has volunteered to drive disabled veterans to their appointments. To me, she's more than a good Samaritan. She is an angel in human form. Keep doing God's work, Cheryl. It's inspiring and appreciated by us all. Ephraim Logan. Mr. Logan. Good morning, sir. Morning. I just want to say, um, do you remember me from last I time? I remember you. And who's this with you? That's my mother. Oh, you want to get at the other microphone? And you Good gave morning. me a break. Good morning. What is your name? Linda. Linda. Uh, hi, Linda. I used to watch you. You, you. Well, you stopped watching me? Oh, wait a minute. That this was a long time ago. Oh. And I believe Where did I you watch me? On TV. Oh, I don't know where you, I don't know if you were surveillance. No, on TV with this in the courtroom. I don't know if you were a private detective and you no. were. <laughs> I don't know. Bring a surveillance on me. Your son was before us last week. Was he? I didn't know that. He was here with a uh, young lady, and yeah. they had a little situation down in Kennedy Plaza. Right. And when he left, he said, I'm not even going to go to Kennedy Plaza anymore, Judge. I learned my lesson. Here we are next week. Where is he? He's back in Kennedy Plaza. Right. Yeah. Now, having said that, you know, as a, as a mom or as a parent, right. you know, we're all protective of our children and we'll wish them the best and That's so right. forth. And every parent doesn't look forward to being in court with a child. But this is a minor violation. 
he was smoking. Right. And there's a ban on smoking in a certain area of Providence. Right. right. So people smoke everywhere, but you can't smoke in that area. And that's why he's here, yeah. and he was smoking in that area. I thought you wasn't going to go back to Kennedy Plaza anymore. Well, I had another lady friend. She she came um, she went to Kennedy Plaza, so I followed her. <coughs> she gave me a cigarette, and she had a cigarette. We both smoked. Oh, you couldn't resist the cigarette, huh? No. No. Was it her or the cigarette you couldn't resist? Both. Both. Yeah. Well, he's pretty honest, Inspector Quinn. Yeah. Right? I'm impressed. Another lady friend. <laughs> well, this was I have a five girlfriends, by the way. Oh. This is an affair of the heart. Huh? How do you work out going with five girlfriends? I mean, do you do them on different days? Uh, yeah, diff sometimes same day or after I'm done with one, I go to the other one. Yeah. Mama. I don't know what my son's doing out there unless I hear it or, you know. Well, he's making a confession to his mama. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> do you ask your mother to approve these girls or you just go with anybody? Uh, I don't know. Do you ever introduce any of these girls to your mother? Yeah, on the phone. Oh, on the phone. Yeah. <laughs> <That's>, yeah. <laughs> she doesn't let them to the house. You won't dare expose them to your mother, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> ah, goodness. Inspector Quinn, how do you feel about this? He was smoking in uh, Kennedy Plaza. Your Honor, after I heard of the five girlfriends, I just lost track of everything, why we were here. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> I'm not going to. I'm not going to pursue this. It's, I'm here to enforce the ordinance, and I'm going to give you a break on it. Don't come back next week. Next All week, right. if you come back, you're going to pay the full fine. Okay. All right. I agree. Uh, I think the last time you were here, you told me you wanted to be an actor. Is that right? I do. And I'm a rapper now. I rap and sing. You're a rapper? Yep, I rap and sing. Yeah. I have a band called Execution. Can you sing God Bless America? God Bless America. Something, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, you better get some voice lessons. <laughs> yeah, I tried. Uh, we'll give you a break on this because you're with yeah. your mama. You better talk to this young man. I'm yeah. trying. Yeah. I've been. See if you can find one good girl and get married and have some, some children and give you some grandkids. <laughs> Make Not you right proud. <laughs> <laughs> Become a big actor. Get some voice lessons. Yeah. 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 Okay. Good luck. Work on hey, thank you. Thank you. Ephraim, Ephraim, Ephraim. Five girlfriends at once? Really? I mean, I get it. Chicks dig you. And who can blame them? We got it all going on with the headphones, spiky hair, and what I guess is some sort of brave hard face paint. But to be honest, I'm worried that all these ladies are hurting your music career. God bless America. On second thought, never mind. Carry on, Ephraim. Play nice, play safe. No glove, no love. Hydrate properly. Good luck, my friend. All rise and hit subscribe so you don't miss the latest viral moments like this one. Share these videos and weigh in on the cases. You be the judge. Subscribe now.